Sudan's security forces shoot down demands to bring democracy back. <laughs> Dozens are killed as anti-coup protests turn deadly. But with demonstrators remaining defiant, will the military back down or double down? I'm Andrea Sankey, and today's newsmaker is the crackdown on Sudan's pro-democracy demonstrations. Well, it's been less than a month since the army seized power in Sudan. Coup leader General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan said he dissolved the government to prevent civil war. But the streets of Khartoum have now become a battleground as civilians resist military rule. We took to the streets today in support of the revolution and to bring back civilian rule because what is happening now is fully a coup. And now they've cut off our internet and telecommunications. But despite disrupted communications and violence, people remain defiant. As they marched through Khartoum, shouting anti-military slogans, they were met with tear gas and bullets. Sudan's security forces deny using live ammunition, and state TV has announced there will be an investigation. General Burhan has promised to install a government of technocrats to lead the country until elections in 2023. But after decades of living under military rule, protesters don't trust the general's word. And the army isn't making it any easier. More than 100 government officials have been detained. The military says they will be released. Civilian officials can only hope they keep their word. All the tenants should be released, uh, starting with the prime minister. So I, I, I expect that uh, all political detainees will be free very soon. That's uh, the, the, if the, uh, uh, the military honors its own word and they said they are going uh, those freedoms, and uh, they are going to uphold the uh, constitutional declaration, then uh, I don't expect these people to stay in detention for long. But as the situation becomes more tense, it's not just those on the streets calling for civilian rule. After the military takeover, the U.S. cut international aid to the country, and from Kenya, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken urged Sudan to return to democracy. The most important thing now is for the civilian-led transition uh, to resume. And that means that this civilian-led transition, which was derailed by the military takeover a few weeks ago, needs to be put back uh, on its tracks. Well, the U.S. State Department also took to Twitter with words of condemnation, but a former American official in Sudan and a frequent guest on our program was highly critical of that response. This strikes me as a wholly insufficient response to the bloodbath that occurred in Sudan today, coming as it does only one day after your talks with the military leaders. Where is the outrage and the action to defend pro-democracy protesters? Well, to discuss the ongoing crisis in Sudan, I'm joined now by Sudanese activists, Hamid Murtada. He was jailed during protests in 2019 against the rule of Omar al-Bashir, and he's coming to us from Florence. Suzanne Jambo is in Nairobi. She's a human rights campaigner and the former foreign secretary for the Sudan People's Liberation Movement. She was a close advisor to South Sudan's president, Salva Kiir. And David Otto is in Kigali, Rwanda. He's a security expert and the director of the counterterrorism program of Global Risk International. Thanks all so much for being with us. You know, whether, you're not, whether or not you're on the side of these protesters, I think it has to be said that these are exceedingly brave people because dozens of their fellow demonstrators have died now, and by most measures, the crackdown is actually getting worse. Still, the military has made promises to oversee the transition to civilian rule and to release the politicians they've detained. Given the crackdown, though, it doesn't uh, look like they're on track to do that. But, David, do you think they will? Uh, this is going to be very challenging. Um, it, now, we've got to look at two things here. One is, um, you know, what does the military want to achieve? And what do the civilians who are protesting, what do they want to achieve? I think, you know, looking from the military's perspective, uh, I think they've partly achieved one of their aims. You know, they wanted to get rid 
of the ministers that, you know, were not aligned uh, to what the military wants to achieve from a governance perspective. So they then launched the October uh, 25th um, coup and, you know, took out the government that was led by, um, well, it was, it was a power sharing um, with Abdullah Hamdok as the, the premier. So I think, you know, they've achieved that. Now, the second thing which they wanted to achieve was to now appoint um, new ministers, you know, that, you know, probably will align to, you know, um, you know the, the military's, um, you know, um, way of ruling. Now, I think, you know, the call... So they're just the basically looking to cement their rule by gaining... It is a consultation. Yeah. Okay, it so, I mean... It is a consultation power. Then are, is there a way that they're looking to mask the fact that they're trying to cement their power uh, by saying that no. they're going to release these politicians eventually? What, what, what is actually their strategy here, then? Yeah, I think it's the, the military strategy is very straightforward. I mean, they do not want to release uh, those ministers at this point in time, because then it, it will leave a situation where they would then foil more protest. You know, so they want to keep them in check. Um, in terms of, you know, that, I think they are winning because, of course, you know, they've got the guns on their side. But I do not see the military in, in any way possible reversing the coup of October 25th, nor the coup of 2019. So I, I think, you know, uh, the advice should be a way forward to probably look at how best, you know, the military can guide the current transitional government uh, to a point where, um, you know, the, the Sudanese can make a decision by the ballot. Okay. Uh, Suzanne, I saw you not in agreement there. Uh, is that is how you see things unfolding? Yeah, I mean, the military is not going anywhere. Um, but for a start, I would distinguish it's not really the military. It is the a general in the military, and it is Hemeti, who is the leader of the RCF, the Rapid uh, Response uh, Former Janjaweed Forces. So... Uh, they are they are there to avoid a number of things, which is the the, the end of uh, office, which should have been in November, and they don't want to go through accountability because they know that the ICC wait for some of their crimes against humanity. So obviously there are many things, um, and and Dr. Hamduk was doing a great job towards a de democratic transformation of the country, and so basically yeah they they are, they are adamant. Burhan and, and Hemeti are not going anywhere. And uh, this now poses a number of things. The people are determined, as equally determined, in fact, if, if not more, because they're giving their dear souls. The Sudanese people, very brave, very determined since the 25th, they have been, 25th of October, they've been sustaining a nonstop uh, protest and, and the slogans that they're using, no to any return, which basically sums up no return to the NCP, the National Congress Party, no return to the army for 33 years that the Sudan has been under the, on the army. So no, the Sudanese are very determined. They okay. use the women. Yeah, they're very determined. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a balance of who is going to hang in, uh, hang on, and 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 win the the, the side? And I'm I'm with the people that they're definitely determined. So Let they me ask people. you this though, Suzanne. I mean, General Aburhan says you know he took power to prevent civil war. Are these protests and the crackdown then better than the alternative? In other words, was civil war actually avoided? There was no any any civil war of any sort, you know. There was none of that. They, they were uh, Hamdouk and uh, Burhan and Hemeti were causing a lot of chaos and confusion. First of all, you know, the national they so closely linked up with the National Congress Party, the NCP. So they had all the access to the finance, the economy of the nation. So they were drying up the taps for people. Everything was going very expensive in the country. So they knew they were trying to build tension for quite some time since since the mid, at least mid of this year, 2021. So obviously they were trying to get people to get angry and get boiled up over economic issues, similar to the way how the people rose in, in 2018, December 2018. So they were tapping on that, again, capitalizing on that. And a and, and clear example, as soon as they made their coup, uh, they uh, made everything accessible and easy. A lot of uh, things, have, uh, commodities have become a lot cheaper, but the Sudanese are not buying into that. They know that they, they know the game the game ball in this situation. So yeah, I mean these guys are not going anywhere. But the people and and I'm I'm asking I, 
uh, perhaps later on, the African Union, especially that Dr. Hamdouk is actually the chairman of EGAD. So, I um, mean, he's unconstitutionally detained. So there are so many questions that arise in there. I, in terms of the region, in terms of Africa, how do they look at what's going on in, right. in, in Sudan? I, I want to discuss Over that uh, further uh, when, we, when we move on. But first, let me get to uh, Hamid uh, Murtada. Um, Hamid, you're seeing dozens of your fellow like-minded, I should say, like-minded activists and protesters killed now uh, in Sudan. Uh, you've been on the receiving end of violent crackdowns yourself. So at this point, given that dozens have died, should, should these protests continue? Of course they should continue. Otherwise, these lives that we have lost would have been in vain. Uh, since the coup took place in, on the 25th of October, uh, a few weeks ago, we have lost already 40 people. And these are the numbers that we, are, uh, we know of. These are the confirmed uh, figures. Uh, figures could be much more than that. So these, these lives would have been in vain. But I think it's it's very important because if 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 you know if protests stop now, uh, the international community would stop to care about the issue, and people you know within the country would start on giving in and 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 you know uh, tolerating this military coup, mm -hmm. and then like all the sacrifices that we have been giving since 2018 or even since 18 1989 would have all gone in vain. The protests must continue. I am not here to make the decision on, on, on behalf of the people of, on the ground. I'm reflecting what, what, what they are saying, that they will continue to protest, they will continue to take this deed, and they will continue to use whatever peaceful uh, method and approach they would, they would find to continue the civil resistance and to make sure that power is uh, returned to civilians and the military is uh, out of the political uh, sphere. Okay, so I mean, you encourage them to keep using their peaceful means, but of course, uh, the military does not use peaceful means. Do you have any fear, though, that there might be a point where the spirit of these protests right now is actually broken, broken by the crackdown and broken by potentially more protesters being killed? I would say that's rather unlikely. Uh, since 2018 and 2019, we have, you know, we have seen so much violence. We have lost so many brothers and sisters. We have seen so much blood in the streets. That could have you know, broke us at any point. But what actually happens is that, you know, people hurt and people are insane because of all of these losses, but they come out stronger. And, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger is, is, is very uh, true in the context of uh, the Sudanese revolution. People are, you know, uh, evolving and developing new, new ways of protesting that could possibly be, uh, be safer and less people would be lost in, in, in the process. But that does not necessarily mean that they're, they're broken and, and the spirits are broken. Actually, if you look at uh, the statements today coming out from the resistance committees in, in, in Sudan, they're showing much more resilience and they're coming back okay. stronger than yesterday. Although we lost 15 people yesterday in one day, in just under five hours, 15 were killed uh, by the military. But okay. today, people are stronger and determined to continue. Uh, just, I mean, quickly, I mean, do, do you have any doubt that the military is trying to do anything other than, you know, develop a permanent structure for it to become the sole leadership of Sudan, and, and similar to Omar al-Bashir? Not, not at all. Uh, it, it's not only after the transition uh, since the transition started, the military were trying to make sure that they continue to be part of the picture. Uh, like it was mentioned uh, just a few a few minutes ago, they are they are trying to avoid uh, prosecution. Uh, there are a lot of alleged crimes that they are trying to uh, escape facing trials for. They are trying to protect their financial and economic uh, institutions and and so on. So for 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 the military to get away with all of these these things, they have to continue and to remain part of the power structures and to be uh, you know okay. a prominent part in, in in government. So I do not for a second think they are trying to do anything, but that they are, all of this is to cement their position in, in power. Okay. Uh, David Otto, what about what the U.S. has said or not said? Do U.S. comments perhaps embolden General Borhan to cement his actions? Because, you know, tweets and statements saying uphold human rights is not exactly a consequence for what the military has done. 
Uh, you're very correct. Um, uh, these strong statements that are coming from the U.S., uh, this is not new. Uh, the, the military is well aware uh, that uh, whether it be the U.S. or the U.N. or any other organization or government that criticizes um, the, the coup now is, is just doing so because, of course, you know, they have the you know, moral obligation or the diplomatic obligation to issue strong statements. Mm. Uh, one has got to remember that um, when the 2019 coup happened against Omar al-Bashir, um, you know, we did not see the same uh, kind of strong statement being issued. You know, my point is that uh, if you want to condemn one sort of set of coup d'etat, you have to condemn the other. Um, it is the same military that, you know, uh, the population jubilated when Omar al-Bashir was taken out of power. Now, the transitional government is a beneficiary of that coup. And if the transitional government is then taken out by another coup, then, uh, you know, the U.S. is condemning that. Then I think, you know, anyone that does that is a double standard. Mm. What I call for organizations and countries to do is to look for a means by which um, power can be retained uh, to um, democratic um, principles of life rather than um, you know, condemning. They, I mean, look at what happened in, in Mali, which is, of course, not look, very for, far from For Sudan. a means, but what means? What do you suggest? I, I think what I suggest is that, you know, the current uh, transitional government should be guided towards uh, holding immediate elections. Now, that should be taken into cons consideration in terms of the logistics to do that, because the military will not bend. Uh, they will not return the, um, uh, the old transitional government that was in place. The population will not force them to do that. Uh, the international condemnation will not force them to do that. I think what will force them is, is that they make a concession whereby, um, you know, the elections are not held in 2023 as planned, but rather before that, you mm -hmm. know, so that, you know, the, the population can have a say. And the, the, time, the, t the time for the transitional government should be limited, you know, rather than extended until 2023. That would be my best... Um, option, uh, okay. rather than, you know, strong words of condemnation. Okay. Uh, Suzanne, does that sound logical? Is it a realistic um, option? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for that option. I'm, I'm more for the U.S. Actually, government has been mandated recently by Congress on, on sanctions, specific sanctions, and they have identified certain names such as Burhan and Hemeti uh, with, with deals, in, in illegal deals such as gold of, the, of Sudan and selling it and, and all that. So basically, targeting specific persons, individuals such as Burhan and Hemeti will go a long way. That's, that's one thing that we, we, we look forward to see in effect soon with the U.S. government, because they have just been on the, I think, uh, sometime in October when the, the Congress passed this, these resolutions. They're very important. Sanctions are very important. Concrete things, specifically targeting certain individuals, are always very important. Um, I wouldn't trust, uh, I wouldn't give any leeway whatsoever the, the U.S. government or, or any government for that matter, Troika, any of the Troika partners, should not give any leeway for this coup to be recognized. There's a huge dis distinction between the coup of 2019 and between today, uh, 2021. When the two, no, uh, the, two, uh, the 2019 was blessed by the people. You see, I've, I've written something very recently about coups and whether they're becoming the daily thing in Africa. There are certain situations where the people do not have functioning parliament, do not have any ways to elect. And where you had, for example, uh, leaders such as the, the former Mali, uh, the Guinean president, he had actually changed the constitution to suit him to stay on longer. Similarly, Bashir yeah, was staying... Oh, can, can I please continue? No, can I continue, yeah, please? Yeah, can I, continue? Yeah, I, I yeah. understand, yes. No, I just wanted no, to make you understand please? that. The ties are. Yeah, go ahead, Suzanne. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can I continue, please? Can I continue? Uh, yes, go, go ahead, ahead. Suzanne. Yeah. yeah. Can I continue, please? Yeah. So basically, the people of Sudan spoke in 2018, December. They came to the street totally against Bashir rule for, for 33 years. There was no way Bashir was going out of, the, out of, out of power without right. the Sudanese. I mean, so, Suzanne, we, we know that, but I mean, recently, well, we have to bring it back to today. I, I know you want to explain yeah. some of the context here. But the problem yeah, today exactly. as well is, and, and this, is, this is my regret with this panel, and we should have said we did reach out to some of the military uh, representatives. No one could join us today, unfortunately. Uh, but we have to remember there are Sudanese people also rallying in support of the military now. 
that, that is what I'm 25th saying. You know, I think uh, you know, what's just, the 25th uh, of October. The 25th of October. Immediately, Burhan declared his illegal coup on his colleague when he was supposed to hand over by November. Immediately, the Sudanese came to the streets against the 25th October coup. So basically, the Sudanese uh, have spoken and they're continuing to speak against, uh, against uh, Burhan. There is no way that anybody should undermine the will and okay. the powers and the nation of the Sudanese people, of which more than 20-something people have died so far and, 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 and continue to die. So okay. basically, that's they're on the streets and they're against this government. I, There's I, no way that the government can be. I want, I want to give everybody equal time, right. if, you, if you don't mind. Let, do let me get back to Hamid quickly, uh, because on this vein of what the United States and foreign governments are doing, you know, every international organization has condemned uh, the military in Khartoum, from the African Union to the, to the EU and the UN. Uh, none of it has mattered. Is this military, Hamid, prepared to be a, a pariah state of sorts? and just take Sudan backwards at whatever cost? Or is there something the international community can do stronger than just making statements that can stop them? So they're bo both sides are somewhat valid. So the military, you know, they have the legacy of, of ruling the country for 30 years under Bashir with almost no international support, uh, unless, uh, aside from the region and so on, but no support from the West, no support from international institutions like the World Bank, IMF, and et cetera. So they, they have the legacy of, you know, surviving for quite some time uh, in, in that context. And this might be possible now. But the context in Sudan now is very different. Uh, like, like, like Susan mentioned, you know, the people are out of the streets. The people, you know, they went out to the streets minutes after the coup was, was announced, even before a statement was made, even before we didn't even know who, is, who orchestrated this coup. People who were out in the streets. So people are fundamentally against that military coup. Especially who's by uh, by by Burhan and Smithy, who are part of the current or were part of the transition, such as only temporary, and people had a lot of reservations about that, uh, you know, the whole time. So, particularly by these two, two people, but whatever military to to, to take place, the Sudanese people have said it loud and clear that again it's that. So that is not a question. And uh, but also on the other side, you know, the military uh, cannot survive you know, for a long time without international or regional support. Because mm -hmm. in the past 30 years, there was this alliance between the Muslim Brotherhood or the Islamic movement and the military. Now this is somewhat, you know, not, not the same uh, anymore. It's mostly the military. So oh. without support from Gulf countries, from Egypt and so on, the military cannot survive. And, and, and here is where the role of the international community becomes very important. The condemnation statements do not do anything. They have not been doing anything. The U.S. senior officials were with the military leaders just a day before the coup occurred, a few hours before that. Another official, a senior official, visited Sudan the day before yesterday. The next day, the military killed 20, uh, 16 people in one day. So it, it, it really, the threats and condemnation does not, do not work. Sanctions, individual targets, sanctions on military leaders is important. Also, sanctions. Uh, okay. for whoever support the military uh, from, from region. If, if, if the international community is really committed to protecting democracy and is really committed to protecting uh, human rights and, and, and the lives of civilians and protect the democratic transition in Sudan, there is a lot that they can do more than peace. Okay, and Hamid. The transition is to... We, we just have a minute yeah. left, uh, and I, I really just wanted to get this question in. And, and Suzanne, I'm going to have to direct it to you because I need to, your perspective uh, being Sudanese. The world is watching mm -hmm. Sudan right now, but more importantly, I think Africa is watching Sudan and its neighbors. Uh, it was inspirational to see a dictator like Bashir removed from power the way he was in Khartoum, but the example being set now, as you mentioned, could actually be dangerous. What are Sudan's neighbors and the wider region actually watching for right now in Sudan? Well, I, I, would, I would say that the fact that the uh, Hamdouk himself is actually the, the chairman of EGAD, I would have wanted to see more condemnation happening from within the region, uh, because this is their chairman. I mean, for, for crying out loud, uh, in, in personally him, I mean, to be uh, up to now detained. Uh, and more so, of course, the, the larger context that is Sudan itself. Um, it's it's a, it's a, an African nation by by all intents and purposes, and we would like would would have liked to have seen a more um, 
proactive, engaged, sustained kind of engagement. We like the first statement that came from the African Union, which immediately disbanded the membership of Sudan from the African Union as a way of punishing the, the coup. But we want to see more sustained, uh, proactive work on, on what's going on in Sudan. Uh, for example, all the human rights violations are taking place in the country. Okay. I mean, all this, we need to see more. And, and, and of course, to come up also with more stronger measures in how, because it is against a lot of rules within the African Union organization. Okay. So it is very important. It's, it's engaged and sustained. Suzanne, yeah. we're going to have to wrap it there. I'd like to thank all three of my panelists really so much for being with us on this edition of the Newsmakers. Uh, and thank our viewers, of course, for being with us as well. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at the underscore Newsmakers and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Andrea Sankey. We'll see you next time.